Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you're tuning in. It's your sis, Moo Magic, aka the Hip Hop Witch. I'm a hip hop artist, educator, professional tarot reader, and intuitive. And we are here today doing a general reading. This is for the collective, and this is a timeless reading. My intention before coming on here today was to make sure that this reading was timeless. If you clicked on this video, just thinking about how much content is out there. Look at this star card right here how much content is out there the fact that you clicked here right here right now and are on this video there's so many other places you could be so one thank you so much for being here and two trust that you are meant to hear these messages if they come through and they resonate do not try to force any of the messages if they do not resonate remember it is a reading for the collective but my intention is for these readings to feel very personal to really help find those who it's meant for and to really find the community that needs it and so if you are here chances are that this reading will resonate with you and that this message is meant for you so with that being said we're going to go ahead and get started personally what i like to do most of the time before i start a tarot reading not always but if I can remember to remind myself, I always like to ground myself into a tarot reading by having one hand over my heart, one hand over like my gut region and just taking a deep breath in and out. And this is just a way to ground us into the reading and to ground our energy and um, just how powerful it is when we connect to our breath um, and really start to just take up space in our body so if you are able to do so and you know um sitting not driving not moving and um feel comfortable you can close your eyes take a deep breath in with me through the nose and out the mouth speaking gratitude on this day through the nose out the mouth and then just asking whatever it is that's on your heart. You can continue breathing in and out of your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth, and just think about what it is that might be on your heart today, what messages it is that you want to receive. And if there isn't anything on your heart today, then maybe just asking yourself to be open to receive whatever it is that's meant to come through from your guides, from the universe, from whoever and whatever it is that you um channel your belief strength and energy from that oneness that we are all connected to take a deep breath in and release and then i like to shake it off sometimes you know get moving get going so i'm actually just doing a general reading um and this is a reading that um, this format for this reading is a reading that I do often for myself too. So I'm going to start with the Hip Hop Tarot deck here. It's one of my favorite decks. As you can see, we had Little Kim show up at the beginning while I was doing the explanation and as the star, the hope card. Um, well, at least the star card for me always represents hope. It always also represents light in the darkness. So already I feel like if you're here um, and you, maybe you need a little bit of light and some darkness in your life right now. All right, but we're going to go ahead and use this this card. This is all major arcana cards. And that's one of the reasons why I really love this deck is it's very great to use in order to just kind of pinpoint the overall energy. So right now at this moment, what is our overall energy that's happening in the collective for each of us going on? Remember that energy can manifest in many different ways. It does not have to be the same for everybody. But this is just going to give us an overall energy. Man, okay. It's, it's feeling real grounded over here. I like that though. You know, maybe real still. Maybe even really still and quiet lately. Maybe things have been still and quiet for you. Maybe um, just in general, there's been a lot of not doing as much as maybe you usually are i know i can see that over here in california it is um over 100 degrees every day in my location and so i have definitely been hiding out all right overall energy for the collective what is it that is the main energy man it is really there we go <laughs> all right we have the world card Mmm, I like this, especially because 
I was thinking specifically about how still and grounded and um, whole it felt just shuffling the cards. That's what, honestly one of the longest times it's ever taken me to get a card to pop out. Um, and I see this as, let's see what the back of the deck is too. Judgment. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I see this as like being in an era of your life where you probably are really starting to really see things for what they are. It's very much giving me the world card it always represents for me the ending and beginning of certain chapters of our life. Kind of like, um, if you've ever heard the word new levels, new devils, um, where it's like, you know, right when you win one, uh, figure one thing out, there's something new to figure out, but it's like you're doing it in a different way because you've gone to a new level with it. So even though there's still this part that doesn't really make sense, it's a completely new level because you're now approaching it from the overstanding wisdom and experience from the last time that you approached it. Um, and so the world card always really it represents to me that closing and ending and beginning of chapters in our life and full circle moments and just really coming back to something again, but maybe from a different perspective this time um, and seeing it you know it's like um if you've ever had a situation where maybe something happened you didn't understand why it happened but then um you know years later maybe you're in the same situation but you're on the other side so let's use the analogy of maybe you got into a huge fight with your friend or your boyfriend or your partner or whoever it is right and then all of a sudden you know you're like i don't understand why they act this way i don't know why they do this way we always have this problem in this situation they're always this type of person right and then years later, you might find that your energy, your um, maybe with a, a different person com has shifted to where now you're the other person in that dynamic. And now you're like, oh, wow, this is what they were going through. This is what they were feeling. Um, this is what they were trying to express to me that I didn't have the understanding overstanding to be able to communicate to be able to have grace to be able to have compassion to be able to speak my boundaries to be able to express how it was making me feel um, in a way that was healthy and not toxic so the the world card for me shows up in many of those ways and i love the judgment cards in the back because this is just giving me this strong energy of just really seeing things for what they are i do think that for some people who are reading this reading it also could be not a warning but just like also, I think that there might be uh, people who might, it is more of a mindfulness, I would say, being mindful of our judgments, our hyper criticisms, our how critical we are. It's like almost to me, even like, let's say, I don't know, I'm sure we all have that type of person Well, no matter what, when you talk to them, that's always negative things. They might even be like going through a graduation. They might be having their wedding. They might be having a baby. You know what I mean? They might be, and don't, well, babies, you know, that's a lot of work. But, you know, it could be something that is um, undeniably super positive, right? Like super beautiful new thing, right? And of course, nothing in life is all the way positive, all the way good. Of course, there's always, um, you know, things are, are a lot more fluid than that, right? Even if you get a new job or you graduate, there's this big new chapter that's scary and you don't know what's gonna happen. And if you're moving into your dream house, yes, moving out of your old house is really exhausting. And you know, all those types of things, right? Those are just examples, right? But I'm sure we all know the type of person where no matter when you talk to them, they're never able to acknowledge the positive things that are happening in their life. And all they hear is the judgment, criticism, and expectation of how it's never good enough. Um, even when something arguably is happening is a graduation, a promotion, a new level of something that's really, really dope and exciting and beautiful. This is that kind of warning of like, see it, mindfulness, I don't even want to say warning, but see it for what it is. You know, see these hyper criticism, inner judgment version of you that is really, really not allowing you to, it's taken away your joy. It's not allowing you to see the totality and reality of what is actually happening in this moment in your life. And it's also just in general, like not the truth. You know what I mean? Our judgments and our inner criticisms and those aspects of our mind are not the full truth of uh, uh, any given situation. It's a perception and it's um, usually a perception based on fear and insecurities and trauma, which, you know, we all got, you know, I have a lot of love for, I hold space for, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's kind of, um, I feel like this coming out right now is just, you know, 
this is like the shadow energy of this is that yes you are seeing things for what they are yes there is this new level of things and and within that it might be uncomfortable because there might be things where maybe you thought it would be easier because you had this great new promotion graduation change next chapter of your life um you know next level of commitment in your relationship but now you're seeing there's this whole other area that still needs work that comes with that territory like all things right and um that inner judge that inner critic can really self-sabotage and really um take away from the the joy of the moment you know and i think there's just this feeling of really enjoying look at that <laughs> really enjoying that's the moon card enjoying this moment and um acknowledging how far you've come acknowledging how how like the star card again acknowledging um you know just exactly where you are in your journey and and if for no one else do it for yourself that's been a big big motto of for my life right now if do it for no one else but yourself if that's what is necessary you know because i think a lot of times in life we do things for the validation or expectation of others or our parents and then it becomes ingrained into who we are as people and all these things right and we forget to just enjoy the good positives of life and to even just allow ourselves to not have our minds just going constant minute by minute hour by hour trying to decipher dissect and over analyze things to the point where we're in analysis paralysis so if you find yourself in that space where you start overthinking everything you're saying and doing it's also giving me the vibe of like let's say you are in a new job or you just transitioned out of um you know some sort of position and now in this new position you know, you're having more opportunities in the way that you've always wanted. But let's say at the end of the night or the end of the day, you're like sitting in the corner, just like overthinking about every single conversation you have with people. Because now that you're in this new opportunity, you're in this new place, you're in this new area, right? You will also find yourself being in an opportunity that's really amazing, super dope, but you haven't been in that opportunity before. So you feel like you're not able to fully show up for it as much as you wish you could if you had more experience, more knowledge, if it wasn't so brand new. So you might just be sitting there at the end of the night with a long list of all the idiosyncrasies that you feel like you did throughout the day where you weren't able to show up for this opportunity or thing that you really wanted, whatever the world card represents for you, this new, new aspect that should be something to celebrate. You're feeling um, judgment for yourself or maybe um, over uh, judgment for the situation. So just something to look out for and to call it out for what it is within ourselves. Um, you know, our minds are so powerful. The way we think is so powerful, right? And being able to um, pay attention to where our focus is, um, is super powerful and something that's coming through right now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit of what kind of specific situation. So this is with the full um, tarot, both major and arcana, of what might be the specific situations that are coming through that relate to this overall arching um, energy. And we got the death card. Yeah, I feel like there has been some huge changes, transformations, um, big, just big up. Paul, if you are watching this reading, if you are listening to this reading, there has been a lot of change in your life. There's a, a change in your family dynamics. Could be um, change within um, your personal, just like how you were looking at your relationship. Maybe the level of commitment within your relationship, the way you could show up in a relationship, the way you were able to show up for yourself, the way you were able to show up for others, um, a lot of inner work, inner, inner deep conversations. There's been a lot of um, a lot of job transitions is what I'm seeing with this too. Um, promotion, you know what I mean? Like something like that moving. I think a lot of people are moving in this time to period too. Just big, big upheaval changes, things that are, you know, it's really not the same. You finally, you know how sometimes you go through changes? This is the energy it's giving me. You know how sometimes you go through changes in life and they're just small changes, you know what I mean? It's not like a big feeling. Um, you don't feel, you know, like, so for example, um, you know, let's say you're a sixth grader, right? Or you're in ninth grade, right? 
Um, when I was a kid, looking back on that, not that this reading is for anyone who's a minor, but when I was a kid, right, going from like 10th grade to 11th grade didn't seem like that big of a deal, right? But going from 11th grade to 12th grade feels like a huge deal, right? Graduating from high school is a huge deal. Graduating from um, middle school to high school seems like a much bigger deal, right? So this change, this transformation that's happening internally within yourself, how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others, how you show up, what you want, what you expect from yourself, um, the way that you are navigating the world, right? It feels like that big change, that big promotion, like that big graduation to where you're actually able to feel that change inside who you are as a person, like the character of who you are. Like I no longer resonate with this energy that used to be something that really tripped me up, that used to be something that was a lot harder than where I am now. And I actually can see the difference. And even though I'm maybe not where exactly I wanna be, I am gonna celebrate where I'm at and acknowledge it um, because I think that's super powerful and being able to see it for what it really is. The judgment, oh, sorry. <laughs> Man, it was giving me, I literally was like that judgment card and, and just wanted to say something about the judgment card. And I was like, no, you know, I, I'll just keep seeing because I had already pulled a card. What else comes through? And the judgment card reverses here. Look at that. So I also feel, I really feel like um, the energy right now is just really being able to see things for what it is and like really acknowledging that. Also, sorry if I um, got too excited and yelled at anyone's ear. If you have headphones on, my bad. Um, as you can see, I really get excited <laughs> with tarot. Um, but anyways, um, because it always be doing that. I'd be thinking about it or seeing it and the cards always be known. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful tool of self-reflection, of healing, of transformation, of all the things, you know, alchemy, right? So judgment card reversed, you know, it's giving me that feeling again of going back to like, for some of you, I feel like you're really seeing things for what they are. I feel like that's that the ideal energy to be in, right? And, and not allowing our minds to create narratives and stories of something that actually isn't what it is. That's a big thing with this energy is that, um, especially it's cancer season two, you know, very um, emotional um, and uh, intuitive and empathetic um, energy and something that can get you heavy in your feels, you know, um, and something with that energy too to be aware of is creating narratives and stories that are actually not real. You know, this this is giving me that feeling of like creating a whole other like, well, wh when I move and if I move and I do this and do that, I might not be able to pay for this and that. And, and it's like, well, you haven't even gotten there yet, right? All of that might be true right? I'm not saying that that's not true, but how much of it is in your head and how much of it is reality and really being able to decipher that, right? Like you have a conversation with a friend and you walk away and it's giving me, I don't know if you guys have seen Inside Out too. I haven't seen it yet. I really want to see the movie, but there's a scene in Inside Out too where like, I think it's two girls who are looking at each other. It's like Riley's looking at another girl and the girl's looking back at Riley and they're like looking at each other like, you know, and inside their heads, it's like, she gave the look. Oh my God, she gave the look. She must be thinking all of this about me. Like it's giving me that kind of energy, right? Where it's like all of a sudden you create, you you went out with your friend and some something, some lull, lull in the conversation, all of a sudden you're spending two hours thinking about this lull in the conversation and how you think that maybe you said something that was too much, maybe you were too vulnerable. Maybe you were too direct. Maybe you were, um, you know, demanding too much. Maybe you didn't demand enough. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, you're going to be sitting there thinking about it for two, three hours. And um, a lot of what I feel like Spirit is saying right now with the universe is coming through with, this tarot reading is coming through with, is that those... Um, that energy is not necessarily the truth of what it is. And, um, you know, to not really get caught up in that uh, because it will really exhaust you, drain you emotionally, physically, and spiritually, and can be like a, a parasite in our lives. Um, and so 
I'm feeling like a lot of the situations, Six of Swords right here, a lot of the situations is about cleaning up your mental or just keeping a tap on your mental health. That's really what's coming through for the energy right now is keeping a tap on your mental health, um, being aware of what's coming through in your mind, being aware of what stories are coming through, making sure, um, you know, that you are uh, being aware and mindful of your inner dialogue, your inner stories, your all of that, what's happening internally is going to be really highlighted right now. Um, yeah, let's see what else is coming through. Any other messages, Spirit, for anyone who is watching this reading right now? Lover's card reverse. Okay. Maybe there's some um, tension within your relationships right now. Or maybe there's just tension with the things that you're committed to um, in life, your jobs, your your life path. Emperor card upright. Woo! And nine of swords reverse. All right. So how I see these energies right here is it could be this for some people watching this. This is very specific to a relationship, um, you know, something that perhaps you are feeling a lot of anguish about and it's not getting any better something that is um you know it's giving me the vibe of an energy that's just like you're in a relationship that's mentally draining that makes you think about it on repeat over and over again and having boundaries and being able to um discipline yourself when it comes to that right so like for example, many relationships are fluid and have lots of ups and downs and things that are happening, right? It's not as concrete always as we want, right? So it might be, and this could be a friendship too. It doesn't have to be just a relationship. Any type of, you know, connection with somebody that you might be experiencing tension or stress or maybe you didn't you had a conversation that didn't go well or you're, you're just not, you're questioning it. Like, what is going on here, right? And it's got you in this feeling of um, just being in mental anguish, going back to that um, judgment card and that whole energy I was ex expressing earlier. For some of you, it really is like a specific relationship that's really um, experiencing strain right now, or maybe you're just overthinking and really questioning everything that's going on, a friendship, um, uh, some, someone in your family, you know, any of those types of things, or just your life path in general, where you are in life, what um, your job, you know, your what, what are you giving yourself to every day? Um, really just thinking about that, your, how, how good of a mother you are, a father, a friend, a, a big sis, big auntie, you know, however it is that you show up in the world um, and questioning all of those things. And with the Emperor card here in the middle upright, it's giving me this vibe of having um, boundaries on our mental, our mind. Again, going back to that judgment card, catching that internal dialogue and saying, oh, is this the truth? Um, I can look at this. I can see it for what it is, but I don't have to live here. And I also know that there's a whole other version of reality. This other person's perception that unless they told me I actually don't know how they feel and have to take a step back and not just assume how they feel and how that might actually be causing me this feeling right here is more of my assumptions than reality um but also um just having boundaries and and discipline when it comes to engaging in this martyr self-sacrificing self-sabotaging energy right um, so, you know, for example, what it's giving me is, you know, if, you know, you're in a situationship of some sort, you know what I'm saying? Um, and you know it, you judgment card again, we know it, we see it for what it is, right? Protecting yourself from that hurt and disappointment of being, of, of, you know, continuously feeding into it um as you know more than what it is you know what i'm saying um if this person is not able to be committed to you in the way that you want and you you um have expressed that it's it's like that feeling of okay i'm either going to accept it for what it is or i'm going to move on um but either way i'm i'm not going to i'm going to have that discipline and boundary right i'm not going to keep replaying into this uh toxic cycle that's only hurting myself right um, where that doesn't mean that the situationship couldn't change in the future. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, like I said, I think relationships and everything is so much more fluid than our society leads on, but it is this feeling of being, um, you know, having that conversation with yourself 
and um, allowing yourself to really um, protect yourself in a way that's healthy, not um, toxic. And if the situation is toxic, then, you know, having that conversation with what it is that your boundaries are and how you can better um, exercise them in a healthy way. Um, and with that comes, you know, grace, love, and compassion, because we can also be really rigid with our boundaries and it can become a, you know, there's a whole other ugly side to that, um, that I feel I have to mention, you know, when people are like, show up the way I want or get out of my life, you know, and I, um, I understand where that energy comes from, but at the same time, it, it feels really icky, um, to, you know, it's hard to expect everyone to show up for us exactly how we want right anybody who you know everybody I'm, I'm sure at some point right if you have a group with um whoever you grew up with right uh if you have children you know all of those things they are not gonna always show up the way that you want them to right um but that doesn't mean that you love them any less um and that relationship can be really hard to foster and to navigate when people do not show up the way you want them to you know um, so there's just something in that I felt was important to express, but I do see this reading is, um, about 25 minutes now. So we're going to go ahead and close this out with a couple Oracle cards for advice. Um, this is the threads of fate shadow deck. I love this card, this deck right here, and we're going to see what comes through for advice. Lots of things, man. Overall, though, the energy of this reading is just reminding you to really just enjoy where you're at right now, to really soak up how far you've come. I feel like if you're watching this reading, you have really, really grown, especially whatever it is that came up to in your mind when I was talking about the world card. Still got three cards. When I was talking about the world card, whatever it is that came up for you, trust that's the situation that I'm talking about that this tarot is trying to talk to you about and trust that that situation like you have really grown in this area you've really evolved you've come so freaking far and you have so much further that you're going in the areas that you're working on and I think this is just the way for the universe you know to really take the opportunity to thank you for that and to love you for that and wanting you to feel that and to feel that ease and and joy and and just wholeness um in your life and not this anxiety you know mental chatter of oh my gosh what does this next chapter mean and how do i show up better and um you know what do i this this that you know any of that we're not doing that <laughs> all right card that came through is fate this is your um general advice the fate card and let's see what it says and as i'm looking this up again i want to just thank you so much for tuning in here on my youtube channel and salute to my patreon subscribers if you are a part of the patreon your um, individual tarot reading for the month will be coming out real soon i've been working on those so get excited for that to be coming your way if you're not a part of our Patreon and would like to join our Patreon community, you can go ahead and click the links down below to be um, to subscribe to our, our Patreon channel. The lowest um, payment is $5, I believe, and the highest one is about $25, and that's the one that gets an individual personalized tarot reading from me each month, and that's also where I have exclusive content, um, write journal prompts for the videos, and also share unreleased music and other fun stuff like that. So if you're interested in joining our community, make sure to check it out down below. But let's go ahead and read this last part, the fate card. So the fate card is a reminder that you create your fate. While some lessons and experiences are inescapable, we have free will and choice within the life we are given. This does not always equal fairness as we do not all start life from the same footing. Nonetheless, each choice we make matters. Yeah, this is definitely giving me the paying attention to your internal dialogue, paying attention to what self-sabotaging choices you might be making subconsciously, all of those types of things. Um, from this place, we can approach the creation of life in an empowered way and thinking about it and not sitting there and beating yourself up and being like, well, you know, my mind's just up. Excuse my language. <laughs> My mind is just messed up. You know, I'm not going to be able to um, figure it out. 
um, those types of things. Um, listen, if that's what it is, that's where you're feeling, um, that's okay too. You know, sometimes when we hear this in a reading, we start start beating ourselves up and start feeling like we're doing something wrong. But this is actually supposed to be an encouraging um, reading and an empowering reading to remind you exactly of where you are in a way that makes you feel uplifted and makes you feel um, inspired and, and and motivated and encouraged. Um, this deck was inspired by the Norns, the three mystical figures that rule the destiny of humans within Norse mythology. The name Norn derives from a word meaning to twine, referring to how they weave the threads of fate. Fate is seen as malleable, things with some fixed aspects. This card's partner is the weaver. The weaver asks you to tend to the threads. This card asks you to get clear on the fate you are weaving. This card is big picture and all about vision. What are you working towards? What are you saying no to? When we say no, we are saying no to all the experiences that would unfold in the aftermath. Both the yes and the no is powerful when we are creating our reality. Both the yes and the no are powerful when we are creating our reality. I feel like that's really where where the magic be in this reading and um the the main message that i feel like is really being drive um home today but with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and pull one more card from the moon deck i love this deck it's made by a beautiful collective of women and um it's just yeah it always has the right messages and a great way to end the re reading with something affirming to your spirit what is it that your spirit really needs to hear Yo, conscious eating nourishes me. And this one, yes, for some of you, it may be about your food and what you're eating. But this card has, for me, also always been about what thoughts you are feeding yourself and how important it is to look at just like your food, your thoughts as food, mind food. You know what I'm saying? Um, so this card really resonates that for me and has come up a lot of times just to highlight my thoughts. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, read that for you before we close out this reading. And the number is 29, nourish. Food is an extension of the earth's love for us, which we must never take for granted. It is a tremendous gift that fuels and nourishes us. Lovingly put foods into your body that make you thrive. Be willing to experiment with what this means for you personally. This is a journey and may change as your womanly phases change. It's also delicious and should be enjoyed. When you consciously eat with gratitude, you raise your vibration, enhance your food's flavor and nutrition, and encourage a positive relationship with your body. Food is also a wonderful way to come together with others and take pleasure in communal meals. As you explore a new appreciation for food comes from, explore where a new appreciation where where your food comes from. This may also be a metaphor. How are you nourishing yourself beyond food? And how is this impacting your overall well-being? And I'm going to go ahead and tag this question as well as the um, ritual um, that's suggested for this card over on the Patreon account. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out this reading. I want to just take a moment to thank your guides, my guides, and the collective um you know, for this moment, this time, the sacred container, um, and this ability to sit and be with, with each other today. So thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you next time. Peace and much love.